uh, seminar that I went to on Monday, uh, one of the things that was discussed is that women make uh, tell or tell stories differently, or um, or will choose different subject matter. Um, I don't know how, to what degree you would uh, uh, agree with that, and also um, uh, I. Uh, I guess my first question would be, um, uh, all of you wrote your own scripts, um, and a lot of it, um, a lot of the content uh, is about intimate relationships and sexuality, and that's, there's a through line in a lot of the, the films by women up here, also by men, but mainly the films by women, so um, I, I wanted to see where it, for where the the germ started for you was it um, an idea when you when you sat down to write the script were were these themes themes you wanted to explore or did this just come as part of your stories um, so I got, I'll start with Naomi um, you've been writing screenplays uh, for most of your career and um, this is your first feature so um, and this is a, a coming of age story. So um, where where did where did the the idea start? Where where did you begin? Well, I, I I couldn't find myself or someone like me up on the screen going through the things I was going through when I was younger. So I wrote this piece to sort of fill that void. Um, and I tend to write small palette stories, hoping that they if they make you feel something, you think about them, and that the larger issues will kind of emerge. So this is a story about friendship and telling the truth and that you can't really have any kind of relationship with anybody in any form, you know, sexual one, a girlfriend, a parent, without telling the truth. And those were the two motivating factors for me and that's where I began. And how about you, Lynn? Um, so this is my fifth film, and my very first film um, I, was really personal. It sort of came from a, an autobiographical place, and it was kind of a similar thing where I, was, I wanted to explore something that I hadn't really seen on screen, and it was a coming-of-age, well, not coming-of-age sexuality, sort of, anyway. It was, it was, it was early 20s womanhood, um, and, uh, and it, was, it was about how, I, um, how one, can, this character who was sort of, loosely based on me, sort of lost her way and, you know, how, why does that happen and how does that happen? Sort of an exploration of that. And, and then my second, third, and fourth films were really um, from a completely different perspective. They were from the outside. They were, observe, I was observing, I made two friendship, uh, movies about male friendship, which I know nothing about. And so I elicited, <laughs> um, having never been in the middle of one, but um, I elicited a lot of collaborative um, input from my actors and uh, I asked them to write the dialogue. I don't know how guys talk when they're not around women, you know, and, and I really wanted it to feel real, so I did that, and it was really, you know, I hope that I'm a keen observer, and, and, that, and I hope that my perspective as an outsider would add something to the, you know, to the mix and the storytelling. And this, my fifth film, Touchy Feely, is, is really like a return. I sort of wanted to go back full circle to where I, my initial impulses as a narrative filmmaker. Mm -hmm. um, but now that I actually know what I'm doing a little more, you know. Um, and so it was a film that was inside of me that sort of had to come out. And, it, and it's, uh, exploring, um, it's exploring healing, it's exploring how to ground yourself, um, that, you know, in, in the, the, um, the way that external validation, you know, can kind of uh, bolster us and then it's taken away and what do we do with that and how our occupations, you know, being able to do or not do our occupations, how that can uh, affect our identity and, and those kinds of issues. But I really started with the characters, I always start sort of small with the characters and the relationships mm -hmm. and then those themes end up sort of, um, yeah, evolving out of, out of that, those truths. Um, I guess uh, I'm really interested in coming-of-age stories, um, and I think that usually they're portrayed in this very idealistic way where, you know, you're a young woman, you fall in love, it's reciprocated, um, and, you know, for me it's much more, you know, or was a process of just disillusionment where you try and form relationships and you fail, and you don't know how to quite connect with people, and I, I really sort of exercised my demons into this character and try and 
you know, all of those false steps that I took growing up. And I, you know, was thinking back about how much hysteria there was around having sex at 13 or 14 and, you know, how people were willing to put themselves into really kind of uncomfortable situations to sort of feel loved or whatever that really was, whatever the myth of love was. Um, so I, you know, wrote a story kind of about a girl who is willing to do just about anything to form a relationship and she latches on to this kind of thuggish guy she sees at the beach and sort of devises all these plans to sort of get to know him and show up at his work and um, for me that was much more true to the experience that I was having and my friends were having as an adolescent. Uh, yeah, I think I, because it was interesting what you said, your first film was um, more, was very personal to, to your experience at that time. I, I definitely feel like this being my first film, I just used it as like therapy, <laughs> like just unabashedly. Um, and that was certainly draft one, and then, you know, like working out daddy issues, you know, <laughs> so yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, I graduated to, to you know, draft four and then five and you know then twenty five you know twenty five or whatever it is and um, the injection of the sort of female theme in it is a sort of somewhat feminist message of a of this female vocal virus. I don't know who's seen the movie who's not, but it basically my protagonist is sort of plagued by the affliction that, that women have taken on this um, sort of sex, you know, sexy baby kind of talk, and um, since the movie is about voice and sound, um, I thought it was um, an interesting place. I mean, not until later in my writing process that I was like, God, you know, that is a pro that's something I have a problem with, and it's personal to me that I would like to talk about. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, this seems like the forum. Yeah. Like, this seems like the time. Um, so, uh, you know, without being too like, oh, it was my soapbox, you know, I wanted to just inject it into the, the movie in a, in a funny way, hopefully. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's personal. It, it's utterly personal, every aspect of it. And um, um, the interpersonal relationships um, from a female perspective, certainly, uh, you know, it, is inherent to being a female filmmaker, I think. <laughs> You got a lot going on in that mind. <laughs> you got a lot going on in that mind. Yeah, yeah, a lot of um, I, I also have a lot going on in my mind, too. Um, I, I love the it. idea of finding your voice. I think that's, that's, that's pretty brilliant. I love that. It, it actually makes so much sense for, you know, for me, I've, for, for this being my first film, too, the protagonist is sort of figuratively finding her voice, but also, in this case, literally, so. Does she, like, drop down? Is she, like... Totally finds her voice. Like it's, it's called <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it's called in a world. You know, it's about voice. Yeah, it's it, yes. Yeah, spoiler I'm, alert is right. I'm happy for you. Thank you. I appreciate. I also found my voice a little bit in this piece too. Um, um, I I think for me the epiphany. Is that the question, sort of the epiphany? Or whatever. So, <laughs> the epiphany was um, like uh, we had been in the city for a very long time and we moved to the suburbs and my boy was getting very large and they couldn't take it anymore uh, below us in Brooklyn. Um, so they said, please move. And we did, and we wanted a place where we could kind of throw up the stereo and dance. We went to Montclair, New Jersey, and um, so uh, to cut to two years later, I'm sitting there, and my wife Allison comes home, and she's like, what did you do today? I'm like, I painted that wall. That's what I did today, me and my friend Alexandra Beige, all day long. And, uh, <laughs> and so... Um, when I got hit in the head with a baseball, and my son has a really good arm, I, um, I bled all over the place, and it was just my, can I swear? Fuck this moment. Like, this is ridiculous. I was supposed to be 
gay. I mean, I was supposed to like hang out with Kathleen Hanna and like be with the Sonic Youth. I'm not wearing a mom sweater. This sucks. So I want to make a movie. I take my big giant id and make a movie where she's just. She just throws it all up in the air, and the rules just don't apply anymore because I'm sick of this legitimacy stuff. And I felt like I took a big deep breath and just went for it. So. <laughs> well, my husband and I made a um, girl coming of age movie where our protagonist, Napoleon Dynamite, discovers his sexuality <laughs> and did, did very well. And so now it was my chance to explore something else. So I made Austin Land, and it really felt like, for the first time, oh my gosh, my girlfriends can watch one of my movies and like really love it. Not that they don't like the other ones, but I think you have to pull that 10-year-old little boy out of yourself to enjoy Nacho Libre. Yes. <laughs> and so, love Nacho Libre. I love, that. I love it, too. I, I love it. <laughs> it's, it's but this, this was just like pink vomit on the stage every day and you know like ace of bass playing loud that's what this movie is and so if that's not a girl movie for the girls then i don't know what is <laughs>